Welcome again. Let's look at the blood supply of the spinal cord. This is our study content. Under the spinal cord blood supply network, we would look at the spinal artery, the segmental artery, the radicular artery, and the vasa coronal artery. We'd also look at uh, clinical anatomy. So the blood supply of the spinal cord, this is the hiata and this is the spinal cord. The spinal cord is supplied by branches from the iota where they are located. Like in the cervical segment, it is supplied by branches from the subclavian. Then we have the thoracic segment, which is the spinal cord that is located within the thorax. And this is supplied by branches from the thoracic aorta. And also the abdominal segment is supplied by branches of the abdominal aorta. We also have the lumbar segment being supplied by branches from abdominal aorta. For the sacral segment, there is a bifurcation of the aorta at the distal part into the internal and the external iliac artery. The internal iliac artery actually gives branches to the lateral sacral artery, which supplies the sacral region of the spinal cord. So we can see that as the spinal cord runs downwards, they are being supplied by the different branches that emerges from the iota. So we would look at the vertebral artery. The vertebral artery plays major role in the blood supply of the spinal cord. Remember that they emerge from the subclavian artery before they enter into the foramen magnum. There is emergence, and this is the anterior spinal artery. We also have the posterior spinal artery that emerges on the vertebral artery, and there are two. So we have one anterior spinal artery. We have two posterior spinal artery. The anterior spinal artery runs anteriorly downwards. They are one artery and they supply the anterior to third of the spinal cord. While the posterior spinal artery are two, they run posteriorly downwards and they supply the posterior one third of the spinal cord. So that is how they run to fit the different regions of the spinal cord. Then we have the vasa corona artery. It may also be referred to as the corona plexus. Plexus in the sense that they are actually small anastomoses that tends to connect the posterior spinal artery with the anterior spinal artery. This is the posterior spinal arteries and this is the anterior spinal artery. So we have a very small anastomosis that tends to run between the anterior spinal artery and the posterior spinal arteries, thereby connecting them. So we have two we have one connecting the right posterior spinal artery with the anterior spinal artery. Then we have the other one connecting the left posterior spinal artery with the anterior spinal artery. Then we have the segmental. The segmental artery, we've said that as the spinal cord runs downward, they are also being fed by branches from the iota, depending on the region where they are contained. For the cervical region, we have the deep cervical artery. And this deep cervical artery, when we discuss the branches of the subclavian in our previous lecture, we say that it is a branch of the costal cervical trunk, supplying the deep muscles of the neck. They also find their way to supply the spinal cord around that region. Then we have the posterior intercostal artery, which is a branch of the thoracic aorta. And we have the lumbar artery that branches from the abdominal aorta, and also the lateral sacral artery. So all these arteries, as they emerge, before they can reach the spinal cord that is located within the vertebral canal, they pass through the intervertebral foramen. The intervertebral foramen is like a space between two vertebrae, and it is through this space that they are able to penetrate into the vertebral canal. This is the hiota. So the branches that we have highlighted before then emerge, depending on the region where they are located. These branches then give off segmental arteries to supply the spinal cord. So they find their way through the intervertebral foramen to reach the vertebral canal where they cannot supply the spinal cord. But they do not just supply the spinal cord. We have what we call the radicular arteries. The radicular arteries are very small arteries and they are sub-branch from the segmental artery. This is the hiota, and these are branches that emerge. So we have the segmental artery running through this course. When they get here, they further divide into two. They divide into the anterior radicular artery and the posterior radicular artery. Then there is another link. You can see that this is becoming interesting. This is the segmental artery. This is the anterior radicular artery. This is the posterior radicular artery. 
what now happens is that the anterior radicular artery runs to connect with the anterior spinal artery. The posterior radicular artery then runs to connect with the posterior spinal artery. You can see the network. The blood is coming from the iota. Finally, it now gets to link with branches that are formed from the vertebral artery. Remember, we said that the vertebral artery forms the anterior spinal artery and the posterior spinal artery. So there's a connection around this point. And this same event, of course, will be seen around the side. Then we have the artery of Hadam's keyways. The artery of Hadam's keyways is also referred to as the arterial radicularis magna or the great anterior segmental medullary artery. This artery emerges from the left posterior intercostal artery. Remember when we talked about the iota giving segmental branches to supply the spinal cord? In the thoracic region, we have the posterior intercostal artery. It is from the left posterior intercostal artery that we have the emergence of this big artery that is termed the artery of Adam's keyways. It is a very large branch that emerges from this side and it runs anteriorly to empty into the anterior spinal artery, which is a branch from the vertebral artery. So this artery is not seen in all regions of the spinal cord. It is only limited to the thoracic level T10 to T12 downwards. So from this region downwards is where we have the emergence of this artery of Adam's keyways, and it supplies the anterior spinal artery to that region, which means that it will be supplying the anterior to third of the spinal cord of the T10 to T12 region downwards. We know that the posterior intercostal artery gives the segmental artery that further divides into the anterior radicular and posterior radicular artery. But on the left, posterior intercostal artery is now where we have the emergence of the artery of Adam's keyways that runs to empty into the anterior spinal artery. So they indirectly supply the anterior to third of the T10 to T12 vertebral level downwards. So we can see the beautiful anastomosis that is formed around the spinal cord from the anterior and posterior spinal artery to the anterior and posterior radicular artery. And also the anastomosis formed between the anterior spinal artery and the posterior spinal artery, which is the vasa corona artery. You can see that the spinal cord is richly supplied with blood. And this is because its function is very delicate. Hence, it needs to be richly supplied with blood so that it can be able to execute those functions. Let's talk about the anterior spinal artery syndrome. This occurs when there's loss of blood in the anterior spinal artery. We've said that at specific regions, T10 downwards, that the anterior spinal artery is being supplied by the artery of Adam's pubis. If there's a loss of blood or there's damage to this vessel, it will also affect the supply of blood to the anterior spinal artery. Then from other region upwards, if there is a damage or injury to the anterior spinal artery, definitely we are going to have the anterior spinal artery syndrome. And we know that the anterior spinal artery supplies the anterior to third of the spinal cord. So structures that are embedded within this region will definitely be affected. And we have structures that are responsible for motor action of the lower limb and also bowel and bladder activities. So if this region is damaged, it means that the activities of the structures that it contains will be impaired. And that is why you have paralysis of the lower limb and also bowel and bladder dysfunction, because the structures that control these activities are contained within the anterior to toe of the spinal cord. So this is a tax for us. And the first one states that what is arterial radicularis magna? Uh, describe this vessel and its relevance. The second one says that describe with an illustration how the radicular artery connects with the spinal artery. So this, of course, we expect that you use a diagram to illustrate this. Then the last one is describe other clinical defects of the blood supply of the spinal cord. We just discussed one. So thank you for watching. Let's continue to increase our knowledge in anatomy through this channel.